Aloha. This is what happens when you wake up five in the morning. Two days in a row, you feel amazing. It's a little bit past eight o'clock on September something. Wednesday, September something <laughs> here in Hawaii. And mm, a couple things going on around in the old noggin. Um, been talking about ego in, um, by Young Pueblo. And also have been talking about um, changing your belief system, moving forward in life, being in the vibration that you want to be in to attract what you want to be, what you want to attract. And I've mentioned on this channel before, please subscribe, like this video, learn things, Andrew Kirby's videos. And I'm going to post a link, not to the one that I'm talking about uh, right now, but to another video that is the precursor or the predecessor immediately before or after that video. And um, the reason is because I, I think the, the video that I'm, I'm posting a link to is a little bit more interesting than the other video. The other video, he talks about uh, ambition and happiness and desire. <laughs> you know where this is going. If you know where this is going, please like this video and subscribe. And he says that ambition is the desire to move from where you are to where you want to go. And I love this dude. He's 20 He's under 25. I think he's 22 years old. Dropped out of college uh, in the UK. Started a YouTube channel on his cell phone like I did. He has, well, not quite as big of hair as I do, but definitely a super cool accent. And um, and I learned a lot from him. Uh, he kind of uses, uh, in, his, in his prior videos, prior to his success, like how I made a million dollars, you know, and a lot of that was, was through YouTube. He, um, he would post, uh, I think his channel, uh, was, was called time theory originally. So he said that he had a lot of trouble with procrastination and how to scientific methods on how to prioritize your life, on how to get out of a slump, on how to move forward in a really great way and how to market yourself. Um, and, and how to make yourself a monopoly, you know, that is be the best at one thing that you can do and then sell yourself to the world. Um, you know, and, and, in the way that he chooses to do it is through producing content in a way that is, um, not restricted by others, right? So he can make as much content as he wants. Um, so in his video on ambition, he talks about ambition being the, the difference between where you are and where you want to go and, and that desire in there. And he calls it the, what does he say, the double-edged sword or the dark side of ambition or something. That's the, the title of the video. And basically he says, you know, ambition's great. It's wonderful. You know, it drives us, drives humanity. You know, you, you get to go after what you want, but on the dark side, um, getting what you want can leave you unfulfilled. And if you don't get what you want, it can leave you unfulfilled. And that striving, that nagging desire to get what you want, right, um, can lead to, um, you know, frustration, heartache, anger, disappointment what have you. And the greater your ambition, then the greater the negative effects of that have to be. And I would respond to him, uh, ooh, you know what, maybe I can put a link to my video in the comments of his section. 
Is that how you grow videos? I have no idea, but I'm going to do that. So, Andrew, watch Sadhguru. And I know that you have posted some videos on meditation and Eastern philosophy. And I would encourage you to dig a little bit deeper into those. Because the way around what your the way around the dark sides of ambition is found by Sadhguru and in yogic practices, which you know I like a little bit better because than uh, than Buddhist practices because it makes me all bindi and sexy by the beach. Um, <laughs> but but uh, but also Buddhism is detachment, and Sadhguru would say um, the problem really. And, and he's got a great video on, on everything you know about manifesting is wrong. I'm going to post another video of his, though. The, the point that he makes is we as humans get into trouble when we have a limited identity. And when we are attached to that limited identity, that limited identity is, what's the three-letter word? Ego. Ah! Right? And that just means, I, I think, right, like our, and usually ego is created out of, out of fear or lack or misunderstanding or anger or hurt or, you know, those, those emotions that aren't necessarily so uh, beneficial to us and, and in fact end up poisoning us, right, because when you're angry, when you're frustrated, when you're sad, it produces a chemical reaction in your body which causes you to die sooner. So don't poison yourself, be happy. And we can control that. But whenever anyone identifies too strongly with their, with their race, with their nationality, with their, maybe even their sex, their gender, the, the clothes that they wear, you know, he, he makes uh, a point of saying, I wear loose clothes. So that, you know, just like having a little bit of space, you know, if you were to wear a skin tight suit every single day or a pair of gloves every single day or hot tight yoga pants. And if you do wear hot tight yoga pants and you're really sexy, please leave your name and number in the comments below and please subscribe. Then you're going to become attached to those. You're going to feel like it's a part of you. And... A lot of my life, I had that and I didn't have that. And I can remember even being sad in my life, like, Jesus, if I had just been a doctor, if I had been uh, an attorney, if I had this identity, uh, my life would be so much better, right? <laughs> but that's not true because that identity leads to suffering. And it's attachment to that limited identity. So what yoga teaches you, uh, a little bit different than, than Buddhism, but yoga, uh, Buddhism teaches you detachment. Um, whereas yoga is the union and it's the union of your mind, body, spirit, emotion, and the outside world. So you are part of everything. The only reason that I am breathing right now is because the trees are breathing. So we are all part of the same consciousness we are all part of the same god and knowing that we have a greater identity and knowing that you know we can enjoy the present moment living in the present moment andrew is and loving in the present moment andrew is what gives life its sweetness you can still have a goal but don't be so focused on that goal and and committed to that goal and attached to that goal or attached to that identity that you don't live that you stop living now so live now living now enjoying every moment that is now loving everyone and loving yourself ultimately first allows you to only have upside in life so there really is no downside of ambition it's just a reframing 
So in that vein, we have Make Way for Love, a story to open your heart by Lindsay Spezzano, Master of uh, Science. Uh, she maybe still lives in Hawaii. I'm not sure. I just finished the book. This is a book, again, that I borrowed from my, uh, from my really dear friend. And I'm going to read a little bit in the back where she says, oh, this is not, I believe, this, it's in italics. Everything in italics in her book is usually from A Course of Miracles. If you read A Course of Miracles and you would like to discuss it with me, please subscribe and click below. Um, it doesn't list A Course of Miracles chapter like all of her other texts in the book that are from Course of Miracles, so I'm not sure if this is. But could you venture to live your life through your open heart? Have you lived too long with it closed, withdrawn from the world? Have you contracted from the experiences life provides? You have become afraid of life and afraid of other people. You have made yourself small in hopes that you will slip through life without attracting more pain. Yet the smaller your heart becomes, the more painful life is. You are less and less able to receive the one thing that makes life worth living. Without an open heart, love passes you by, and you cannot taste heaven's grace. Any experience may be seen in beauty if it is witnessed through an open heart. Boom! Awareness. Consciousness. Living in the moment now for love. And then finally, in her last chapter, um, she says, uh, this is a couple of, couple of paragraphs, To choose happiness and love is to stretch yourself to become bigger, to be less defended, to feel closer to other people, to be more generous, to reach for your center, to receive from your source. It is to feel safety, to see beauty, to walk in grace. It is to choose life. To move away from life is to choose love's opposite. It is to nurse your wounds, to feel righteous, to not care, to separate yourself from others, to dramatize, <laughs> to dramatize your suffering, to fight, to compete, to close your heart. It is to feel pain, sadness and fear it is to choose death life is a continuous challenge with confront which confronts us only with one question over and over again in every instant now in this moment will you choose to feel happiness and love or will you choose to feel pain and fear will you shine the light of your heart and mind into the darkness or you hold it back Countless times a day we are faced with the choice. Will I respond to a challenge with maturity, putting the best construction of, on everything, extending myself, opening my heart to the point of experiencing contact and love? Or will I re react with indulgence, separating myself further, feasting on the pleasure of feeling, pleasure of feeling hurt and righteous? Even though immaturity reaps painful results, it is extremely difficult to pass up its temptations. It feels so good to overreact, to even the score, to attack back, and to relieve grievances. It takes great wisdom to make the choice for life and great practice to make the choice constantly. Yet it is only in this choice, this choosing of our hearts, that we can make way for love. As the children taught, sweetheart, love is what is important in life. Love is everything. It is pouring out to you in every moment. All you need to do is receive it. All you need to do is attend to it, and it will beautify your world in every way. Your time in this life is precious. The purpose of time is to find the love. Look for it everywhere. Look for love in every face you see. To learn of your own innocence and beauty and to lead you back to the garden. You are wholly lovable, sweetheart, and wholly loved. Heaven awaits. Follow your heart and find your way home. I was not getting choked up. I don't have emotion. 
Don't look at me. I've got more reading to do. <clears throat> the greatest gift sadness gave me was the motivation to transform. Oh, come on. Seriously. Do not let a cloudy mind trick you into doing things you are done with. Reminder, you can love people and simultaneously not allow them to harm you. The most widespread affliction that people suffer from is a lack of belief in their own power. To be so broken, to have fallen so deeply that the only thing you can do is rise into a new you. Phoenix. And... Uh, you guys want one? Okay, just one. From the next chapter on Union. Yoga. The healer you have been looking for is your own courage to know and love yourself completely. I'm going to go have some emotions. I'm going to go feel. I'm going to go love myself. I suggest all of you guys do the same. Andrew Kirby, if you're watching this video, Sadhguru. Love you all. Mm -hmm. Have a beautiful evening.